Yes. Right, I think we all have many such experiences, and this I think is the reason why a lot of people are fundamentally fatalistic. You know, why it's attractive to believe that whatever happens is the will of God, or why uh, Inshallah Allah willed it this way, or uh, why I deserved it this way, etc. And uh, you know, when I used earlier the term from Camus that we need to be a coup d'état, it's uh, it's the attitude that comes out of Judaism and Christianity that we are addressed by God's word rather than by events in our lives, primarily. By the word we judge the events and therefore we, in, in whatever situation, we, we should uh, acknowledge what takes place and not be ignorant of it in that sense, but not approve of it necessarily. But ask God to help us, how do I deal with this now? I saw a license plate yesterday on a car that said, if not you. And it's, it's part of a Jewish saying, and that is, if not you, then who will do something about it? If not now, when? If not this, then what? And that ought to be our constant attitude towards situations. Rather than resignation and acceptance, it should be, okay, now I'm in this miserable situation, I've been insulted, uh, whatever, what am I going to do now? I'm not a prisoner of that because I'm owned by God, loved by God, cared for by God, so now how do I, uh, what do I do next? You know, and you, you pray, you write out another application, you uh, consider whether you should uh, make a fuss over it, um, you make a note to yourself so you don't make the same mistake again, whatever, you know, but you're not, you're not a victim of that circumstance now. You're a human being made in the image of God. You are not a master of history in the sense of making it, but you are a, uh, mandated to be a person in history, in this moment. So what do you do as a person? Well, you fix yourself a drink, uh, you pray, you uh, call somebody, you, uh, you know, you, uh, so you, you, you respond with, with, uh, with an activity rather than with passivity or, or automatic guilt. Sometimes we're guilty and then we need to admit that and confess, but so often we're not guilty. You know, it's, it's the nasty neighbor or it's the circumstances or it's the bug that gave you the flu or whatever. But you don't just say, well, no, that, that just happens. Um, in, in, in the book that I wrote, The Innocence of God, I address some of those issues. And the other one too, that neither necessary to, nor inevitable, uh, which sort of continues the same idea that, you know, history isn't a blueprint. Uh, God did not plan that uh, in 1889, Mr. Benz would develop the first uh, internal combustion engine for a motor, for a motor car. It was, it was their baby. I sometimes wonder, I wrote that recently, you know, I wonder why some of the developments that we've benefited from in the 18th and 19th century didn't occur in the 12th and 13th century. I have no answer to it. But I wonder whether some of the reason, you know, one wonders, I wonder, 
Some of the reason is because uh, for centuries people were far too spiritual and didn't emphasize that the Bible calls us to live a life. Uh, I've read that somewhere, I forget where, that you know, while the medieval church was concerned about how to get to heaven, the Jew was concerned about how to get grain across the Mediterranean. Well, he was much more following God's word of getting a life and having it. You know, setting the sail, turning the sail on the mast and so forth, which was a European invention at that time. Uh, so, you know, history isn't a, isn't a program that unrolls anyway. We can retard history, we can slow it down, we can advance it, we can turn it right, left, uh, whatever, by our choices. And at the, at the central point is always a person. God acts in history, he creates history. But he also created human beings to create history. And there are several actors on the stage of history. I haven't mentioned the devil. I don't want to mention the devil, though he's there too. He's also an actor, you know, but forget about him for a moment. Don't pay too much attention to him. Uh, so, you know, in, in a situation you might have in mind, uh, the thing is not to say, well, somehow this is purposed by God, but rather possibly <coughs> God had a hand in it, but probably this is just what happens normally in a fallen world with people like the ones I know, and with myself, because I'm not perfect. And so the central biblical emphasis is, you know, love your neighbor, uh, <clears throat> uh, follow the discipline of Christ which is not just believe in him for salvation, but believe that he tells you the truth about the universe he created. And so I'm, I'm thinking and writing right now about the relationship between God having created a universe of defined realities and what a craftsman needs to know about the timber he works with or the leather. Or there's a shoemaker over on Lexington that we've fallen in love with uh, theoretically. Uh, he's a 78-year-old Italian man who loves fixing shoes at a very 